We did it, boys. The Eagles have notched a win, their second win of the 2023 season. And most importantly, more important than the four points, I think we've really made a massive statement to the competition. This proud football club does not lose 17 times in a row. We are a force to be reckoned with. Welcome back to True Footy, guys. Uh, here to unpack the Eagles' second win of the season. Uh, my voice is a little bit hoarse. It's actually not from shouting at the screen. It's actually got more to do with the week I've just spent in Scotland and Ireland getting absolutely obliterated. But came back Saturday night, last night, um, and I'm incredibly sleep deprived, but still got up at seven to watch this game. And of course, I'm really glad I did because that could be the last win we have for a little while. There is no doubt that it feels pretty good to be on the winners list again. It has been, well, it's been 16 games. Uh, and if you include the bye, that's 17 weeks since we won a game of football. And, you know, in hindsight, look how good GWS are. How the hell, how the hell did we beat the sixth best team in the comp? Anyway, we'll talk about this game in particular. Um, look, I'm not going to lie to you. I found that hard to get excited through. Even when we were sort of torching North Melbourne throughout that first quarter and a half, I think we got five goals in front. I don't know what it was, but I, I don't know if it's because I'm dead inside from the six days of absolute debauchery. <laughs> But I, I found it hard to get really up and about. And I'll be honest, I, uh, there were patches through that game where I thought, man, North are so pathetic that this isn't even enjoyable. Of course, that was I was saying that like a quarter and a half into the game where obviously North Melbourne fought back and they played some pretty good footy at times. But for a period there, there was just no defensive pressure, no effort. And it was, I almost felt probably how teams have felt beating up on us this year. It was weird to be sort of doing it against North Melbourne for, I don't know, like a 15 minute patch of the game. Obviously that might seem, seem like misplaced arrogance because North Melbourne came back, but I'm just talking about that 20 minute period there where we got on top and it was made very easy for us. But I, I don't want to dampen the mood of a, of a pretty good win we did play some good football and you do have to be good enough to put away a bad team when the opportunity presents and our players were good enough to do that for periods of this game and obviously towards the end you know we, we got out to five goal leads twice in this game and both times uh nearly lost the lead so obviously there's a lot of um concerns from that game i watched adam simpson's press conference at the end and he seemed a bit of at a loss as to why he said the same thing he was concerned about those two patches of the game um like 16 goals out of 20 were kicked all at one end he seemed even at a loss as to why, but I don't want to focus on too much on negatives in this video. But yeah, obviously, I think most Eagles fans would be in the same boat in the last five minutes of that game where we, you know, were four goals up, maybe three goals up, um, and nearly lost the game. Honestly, if that game goes for another minute, we probably lose. As the minutes were counting down and we were, you know, conceding an avalanche of goals, I must admit I was feeling a bit really frustrated, actually. But when the moment the, the siren goes, uh, Oscar Allen marks, he kicks the dumb shade, the siren blows, and the crowd erupts. I got strangely kind of emotional. I think it might have just been a bit sad that I wasn't there. But these are the sort of moments that are beautiful in football, obviously. I've been saying for a while, you know, the, the game where we'd come back and win and play out of our skins and the crowd goes nuts, those, as silly as it sounds, often feel like as good as big final wins. Today was not like winning a premiership, no. But it was nice to see a, a crowd of about 39,000 Eagles fans show up as they've consistently done all year cheer the boys on even when you know some of the football was a little bit disappointing i felt very proud of the eagles fan community in that moment and kind of grateful as well i kind of felt in equal parts you know grateful that people were going there when i couldn't supporting the boys in a, in a really fantastic and wholesome way and as much as anything it's kind of a reward to all those other eagles fans as well who have put up with the last four months of football um, as we all have so i thought there was something nice and wholesome uh, both for the the fans and the the players on the field as well and there's a you know a lot of those boys who hadn't well two players in that game marrick and jack williams had never played in a win and then you got a handful who have played in one like Chessa, Noah Long, Hewitt. It was nice. It was a wholesome moment. It, it, it completely eradicated the frustration of the last, you know, well, the last quarter really. But, you know, I've been soaking on this channel all year about the Eagles. Um, I'm not going to be the one to tear apart a, what was a pretty satisfying win on the whole. Um, there are a lot more positives than negatives, that's for sure. So I'll race through some of the positives. Uh, you know, from a team point of view, in terms of the team stats, uh, one of the best things about this game was we had 60 inside 50s. Our season average has been 43 this year. We completely dominated possession. You know, we had 374 disposals. That in general, I've noticed as a stat, has really gone up pretty much since that Sydney loss. On top of that, we out tackled them by four tackles as well. So it's always a really good sign um, of somewhat of a dominant game when you have way more possessions and uh, out tackle the opposition. And as an aside, I will say, we definitely deserve to win this game. We were the better team. There was just some lapses, 
I don't even know if it was fatigue, whatever reason, we just couldn't sustain our lead. It could be psychological. We did get monsters in the clearances. North have a pretty good, uh, I was gonna say on ball division, but LDU in particular is an unbelievable clearance player. They smashed us 46 to 33. And I think at one point at half time, they were plus 19 in clearances, which is the biggest differential in a half that has ever occurred this year. But you know, uh, outside game has really improved over the last few weeks. I remember really being critical of the outside game against Sydney. Honestly, what aspect of that game wasn't horrible. But on the outside, we're starting to move the ball a lot more smoother and recording 102 marks is actually a really good indicator. They used to say like during that 18, 19 period where we were actually a good team, if we had 90 marks, that was generally the threshold for when we win. Having 102 today is a step in the right direction. And you know, we can see we don't have McGovern or Barras playing in this game. That's a really good effort. And on top of that, 26 tackles inside 50 to five. So some really, really promising team stats there. This game was largely built off the back of some strong performances by senior players and this is again a time we're talking about a team that is missing a lot of senior players. Brass, Shuey, probably two of our better senior players in the recent times and then McGovern, obviously. But the ones in particular, you know, I'll highlight two. These weren't necessarily the best two players on the field, but it occurred to me, I think the players in Tom Cole and Jamie Cripps have been really underrated missing pieces in this team. In particular, Cripps in this game, he's actually been fantastic since he came back from injury. This is the second time he's had more than 10 tackles. He had two goals and 18 possessions. He's just composed a really good leader out there. As far as I'm concerned, I'm happy to play him for another two years. And Cole, you know, didn't have an outstanding game, but I really felt like some of his defensive efforts, his poise, his composure, he's starting to find his groove back. And I just watched him play out there today and I think we've missed a play like that. Some of the more obvious senior players who played well, I think Shannon Hearn probably gets beer for us. Honestly, when you look at the, the starting back six of this game, you know, when, when you consider Larky kicked uh, six on us in round one, that was a real vulnerability for us going into this game. And, and part of that was the team defense, but Shannon Hearn did a fantastic job. Darling was really good. You know, he pushed up to all areas of the ground. He got a goal out of the ruck. He took a defensive mark in the back 50. He sold some candy in the middle of the ground and set up an Oscar Allen goal. Uh, that was his best game for a long time. I'm going to keep mentioning Bailey Williams because this guy's gone from strength to strength. And he's an interesting uh, ruckman where he's getting beaten, you know, in, in hit outs, uh, so to speak. Obviously, he's got Jack Williams as a backup versus Goldstein and Cherry, who both played pretty well, in particular Cherry. But this guy is so good at ground level and he won six clearances for us and he's been one of our best clearance midfielders all year. On top of that, three strong contested marks. I think he might not have got a goal in the end, but he had 23 disposals. This guy has become a very good player. Jaden Hunt, again, one of his, uh, what is becoming a trademark, good Jaden Hunt performance. 25 touches, a goal. Gaff was good. I think Hunt and, and Gaff had our most meters gained. So the senior players really stood up and we'll talk a little bit about the youth too. Actually, before I get to the youth, there's two other senior players I want to highlight. Uh, first of all, Oscar Rowan. Serious gun. He, he's a little bit Kennedy-esque now in the sense that he may not get that many looks at it, but he can have a seven to 10 possession game only kick two to three goals and still have an enormous impact. And that mark shows just how stupidly talented Oscar Allen is. Tim Kelly, uh, to an even greater extent in this game, he has seriously lifted. You know, I would have said you know, prior to coming to West Coast, Tim Kelly's best game is suited to be, you know, the first received sort of midfielder, almost more outside than in, but he has become a very solid contested midfielder now. He had 10 contested possessions in the third term. He had seven clearances, 19 of his 26 disposals, were contested and he was, he's just been hunting the footy lately. So big props to Tim Kelly. You know, he gets unfairly uh, sort of maligned in the sense that he's always going to be the center of that Tim Kelly trade saga and reflecting on whether or not we should have done the deal, but don't let it take away from the fact that Tim Kelly is having a fantastic year. Now, in terms of the youth, um, you know, Hewitt and Jack Williams both had their best game at AFL level. And I've I hyped up Elijah Hewitt in a recent video, I think, but ah, call me a Nuffy Eagles fan who's just being blindly optimistic. But I reckon this kid has, you know, top five player in the game potential. It's his blend of attributes. It's the fact that you can tell he wants to be a superstar. He's excited to be out there. He loves doing flashy shit. He's capable of it, but he's actually a pretty good bread and butter midfielder now, and he's starting to accumulate the footy more and more as he builds his tank. 21 possessions is the most touches he's had in a game. Sure, his radar is a little bit off. His disposal efficiency wasn't great, but he does take on difficult kicks and passes. And we're very early into this kid's career. He'd spent a fair chunk of this year injured. It's interesting to reflect on the Harry Sheasel or Jinby and Hewitt sort of dichotomy. Not sure if dichotomy is the right word to use there. The Eagles obviously traded away uh, pick two in last year's draft, which would have been Harry Sheasel potentially. And you know, Harry Sheasel's potentially going to win the Rising Star this year. We traded it for picks nine and 14. That became Jinbi and Hewitt. So Eagles fans, 
What would you prefer right now, having seen what we've seen? Would you give up both Jinbi and Hewitt for Harry Sheasel? I actually wouldn't. And it's more so because of Hewitt than Jinbi. But to have both, that's fantastic. To be fair, North Melbourne fans, if you're watching this, I know that you wouldn't trade Sheasel for Jinbi and Hewitt either. And I respect that. That's fair. But the general point I'm making, we did very well out of that. And I'm not losing too much sleep that we don't have Harry Sheasel. And that's more of a reflection of how good Jinbi and Hewitt are. Jack Williams also, you know, he's a, a young uh, forward ruck who's still sort of growing into his body. He, I think he grew to 198 centimeters, up four centimeters from when he was drafted. Late draft pick, ruptured his spleen at this preseason, missed half the year. And now he's getting a consistent game at AFL level. And I just thought he looked the most composed and it was probably his best contribution to a win uh, in this particular game. He's playing backup ruck, which is a tough role. He's not ready for it. He's getting games at AFL level. He's played seven now, and he's just looking assured and composed. A couple of strong grabs, five marks in this game. I actually think we've got a potential AFL player there. I'll shout out Long as well. He didn't have, you know, the most possessions in this game, but a uh, couple of good setups, that good, you know, the crumbing goal that he got, that sort of intercept he did where he controlled the ball immediately and snapped it. We, It's been a while since we've had a true small forward like that. I mean, if you ignore Willy Rioli. I don't in class Liam Ryan and Lacra as those same style crumbing small forwards. Junior Rioli, you know, fantastic player but Noah Long has been a fantastic replacement I won't harp on about negatives uh, just to highlight and maybe even just summarize some things I made uh, at the start of this video we haven't really found an answer for Paul Curtis this is the second time in a row he's torched us up he kicked four goals in the second quarter and I think reading uh, reports online I didn't notice this myself but apparently they're all against four different opponents but it's been a thing for a while uh, for us to struggle against opposition small forwards and Paul Curtis really likes playing us and him kicking four goals in a quarter well it's obvious the impact it had it erased the margin by 24 points. Final quarter fade out wasn't great as well. Like I said, it was a weird game with 16 goals kicked at one end out of 20 and, you know, no real signs of wind. Interestingly, in the last quarter as well, I don't know if this is from fatigue or of a structural thing, but all four goals that North Melbourne had were, you know, chains out of the back half, which is concerning. So that's probably all the negatives that I'd pick up on this game. Um, overall, you know, I am happy. It's a nice, wholesome moment. I think we've really turned a corner. That's obvious. That's been the case since the Sydney game when we had that great first half against St Kilda. Some promising signs against even Carlton last week. Uh, you know, Richmond at home. We've been okay now. And, you know, there's something nice about having potentially going to finish the year with two wins uh, rather than just the one. One just seems extremely disgraceful. Two is maybe a little bit more tolerable because that's uh, what us and North Melbourne did last year. Probably going to win the spoon. Uh, we've got four games left. We've got Essendon. We've got the Derby. We've got the Crows in Perth and the Bulldogs away so the most winnable game of that is the Derby and uh, at this stage I'm not really giving us too much of a chance of that one but three are, are a mixed bag but you never know with the Derby so we're probably going to have the wooden spoon locked up but uh, it was nice to have a good day like today in what has been a tough year to watch anyway guys thank you for watching uh, this video is a little bit late I've been really tired and sad because I'm sleep deprived after what was a fantastic trip I was in Scotland Ended the trip in Dublin. Uh, I think the only Dublin I did was my chances of liver failure with all the alcohol I consumed. It was great fun. Uh, we were staying in hostels and me and my mates started this thing where we would deliberately mistime cough farts in a crowded room. <laughs> it doesn't sound funny, but it really is. <laughs> you could tell we were uh, pretty sleep deprived on the trip and things start to seem funny that are not funny when you're sleep deprived. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go rest this voice and then edit this video. I'm back from my trip now. Um, I haven't really planned what videos I'm doing this week uh, because I only saw, you know, half a round of footy. So I might just catch up on that, start making some content for you, maybe continue that draft series. The views have been really solid lately, guys. So I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, and as always, always I, I appreciate any feedback you give me as well. So calm the mighty eagles and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.